everyone, it's Alana and welcome to my June wrap-up. I know this is probably going to be a few days late, slash maybe a week. Uh, I learned with my vlog never to timestamp when you're going to put your next video up because that's disastrous. But anyway, we're here now and we're going to talk about all the books that I read in June. So in the month of June I read seven books which was what I read last month and last month I said that that was like a pretty good amount for me. Usually I average around five-ish. A good month I'll read six, could be more, could not. But is this my new average? Is seven what I'm going to be reading every month now? I don't know. June for me was a bit of a mixed bag with reading. There were a few like new favorites that I'll keep and cherish there was also a reread that I loved and enjoyed so much more the second time around. Like I could just appreciate an aspect of the book which sort of confused me a bit before, but the second time around rereading, so good. I haven't reread a book in ages because I've been trying to catch up on all the ones that I've been buying, but I decided to finally do it and I'm so glad I did. And hopefully my goal will be to reread one book a month from now on hopefully and there were also some real letdowns or maybe i just had my expectations too high but there were some disappointing books in there too so let's get into it the first book i read in june was a curse so dark and lonely by bridget kemera this book has been majorly majorly hyped and I've become like a bit wary of books that are heaps hyped because I'm either going to love them or I'm going to hate them. So I went into this with sort of like not not low expectations but a more realistic expectation I'm going to say and I ended up liking this book. I really liked the cliffhanger at the end so I will be picking up the next book and it was an original take on Beauty and the Beast so I appreciated it for that as well. I really liked how they included cerebral palsy rep in it and there are a few other elements that like I really really like but I don't want to go into because they could be spoilery but it came down to the fact the reason why I think I rated this book three and a half stars and I had a few people message me over on Instagram I go under the same handle if you want to check me out and say I thought you enjoyed that book why is it only getting three and a half stars to which I say three and a half stars for me is not a bad rating it means that I enjoyed the book there was just an element or two that didn't quite like hit the mark for me for me three and a half stars is like an average rating like it's it's still good I'm glad I read it but it didn't change my life or anything. So the reason why this one got three and a half stars from me was because it felt really juvenile at times and really teenagery. And I know that's like a downside of YA sometimes. Like YA fantasy can feel a little bit repetitive and some characters end up feeling like the same because they could be, in this instance, like snarky and, you know, wounded on the inside, but they're trying to work through that. So overall, ended up enjoying this book. It took me a little bit to get into it. The characters were a bit teenagery and I felt like sometimes the plot was only furthered because they wouldn't communicate with each other but that is what it is and I'm still excited to be picking up the second book which I think comes out... Nah I'm not even going to try and guess when it comes out because we all know how that story ends. The second book that I read in the month of June was Daisy Jones and the Six by Taylor Jenkins Reid. I heard some mixed reviews about this book, like there was some major hype surrounding it but there are also some people saying, you know, it's it's not as good as The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo, which is a previous book that this author has written, or it fell short or whatnot. So I tried to go into this with the mindset of don't compare it to The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo. It's its own book, it's its own story, entity, thing. So we'll go with it like that. And I ended up coming out really, really enjoying this. It's written a bit different. It's like it's written in interview format. So you've got like, I'll flick to a page where I won't spoil you. You've got like their names here and then what they say. So it's purely interview in a book, but it pieces the story together really well. And I still really enjoyed it. And that's why I got the four stars. I don't feel like the little, there's a little like tiny revelation slash twist at the end, which I didn't think was really needed, but it's fine. It didn't take away from the story or anything like that. I think it was trying to add to the story, but it's, it, I don't really think it needed to be there. If you've read it, you'll probably know what I'm talking about, but I don't want to say too much in case I spoil anything. I also recently watched someone else's wrap up on here where they had read it and they said it had the same sort of formula as The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo and I really got where she was going with that because in that one you have like a look into the life of famous people 
you do with this one too. The Seven Husbands is more of like the Hollywood elite. This is rock and roll in the 60s, 70s era. And there are some other comparisons that she made too that were just really spot on. So if you want to check that out, her name is Reading with Cindy here on YouTube. She is amazing. She's Her videos are so, so entertaining to watch because she's just so honest and I just go check out her videos. It's in one of her wrap-ups. I can't remember which one. But yeah, this was a really good book. I'm really glad I read it. I still want to read more of Taylor Jenkins Reid's book because she knows how to tell a story and she knows how to make you care about characters who you wouldn't think that you would care about. And yeah, good times. The third book I read was Empress of All Seasons by Amiko Jean. So this was a case of beautiful cover, amazing synopsis, if you want to read it. I don't know, just like press pause or something. It also had a really cool hook on the cover and it was recommended by a few of my favourite authors on Instagram. So I saw them saying that they read it and they loved it and it was amazing and I was like, hell yeah, I love what you write, so I'm going to check out this book. But mm -mm. maybe I gave this one like three stars. I think it was a generous three stars. So I really loved the world building. The world building was done really, really well. I loved how it put you right into the setting of the book and made everything around you feel believable. I should probably quickly tell you what it's about. So in this one, there's like a competition where all these girls can compete in the seasonal rooms so there's a palace that has like a room for each season but you go in and it's a bit like Narnia I guess like it just opens up and it's deadly and there's shit going on everywhere all these girls get to compete basically they have to survive the rooms in order to become empress in waiting there's also lots of different demons and creatures and stuff in this the girl who's going to compete has an ulterior motive and she is of course also a demon monster thing herself who looks like a human and then can turn into her beast or whatnot and that is banned and illegal yeah i like that it doesn't end the way you think it's going to end but i also think the ending was super duper rushed we also didn't get to spend as much time in the season rooms as what i thought we would because the whole like the hook on the cover all may compete only one will survive there's a big weapon like you think that it's going to get some hunger games type shit happening in those rooms i'm not going to tell you if it does or doesn't but what i got out of it was we got like a hundred plus pages of world building and building the story up before she even gets there and then she spends like less than 20 pages in a room like I, it wasn't enough for me to satisfy my fantasy cravings so there was that. Not a terrible book, just not for me. I don't like book bashing, so I hope I haven't offended anybody with this, but this one just wasn't really for me. But if you want a more diverse book with Asian mythology and all of that in it, it was really, really good for that. I loved watching that world build and everything, but yeah, personally, it's just a no from me, unfortunately. I really, really, really wanted to love this book. The fourth book I read was Forks by Nadine Brandis. This was another one where I enjoyed it. I think I gave this one three and a half stars. It was verging on a four there for a while, and then it sort of hit a nerve personally with something for me, and that sort of put it back down to three and a half stars but as books go this was still pretty cool it's a fantasy historical retelling thing so this one retells the gunpowder plot in England where they try to blow up Parliament and King James with barrels of gunpowder and there's an element of magic in here with masks and stuff and I really really liked that but sometimes how the magic was conform just to the masks sort of just felt like it's this because it is didn't really go to explain deeper so I would have liked to see more about how the magic came to be rather than people have masks and whatever color mask they have is whatever color that they are most powerful in and can use so if you have a red mask you can control the color red and also red things so there's one guy that can control like the blood through your veins and things like that so that was kind of cool i liked where the author was going with this one and the writing style was also really really easy to read i am thankful that i picked this up but the magic was a little just because and then also and this is where it sort of struck a nerve for me i'm not religious i don't care if people are i don't care if you're not like whatever you want whatever preferences you have that's that's fine, like that's all up to you. But about halfway through, I worked out that 
one of the characters hears a voice and it's white light which is this like tempting voice and whatnot. About halfway through I sort of started thinking is this like the author's interpretation of God and God speaking to someone directly and the more I read it like that the more that sort of felt like the case and that's where the book sort of lost me a little bit because I don't know like I said I'm not religious and I've never really experienced something like that myself so yeah I don't know. But still a really good book. Interesting concept with the two different factions that are fighting against each other. Really easy writing style. And I'm really interested now to pick up the author's latest book, which is Romanov. The fifth book that I picked up in June was One of Us is Lying by Karen M. McManus. This book was actually the one that surprised me the most reading-wise in the month of June, just because I thought it'd be a bit stereotypical and it was like a high school set thriller, but... I ended up really loving it and it's one of those books that I think is like a guilty pleasures book. Yes, there's stereotypes in it and yes, it, after watching 13 Reasons Why on Netflix, it gave me those type of vibes sometimes in this. In this one, we have a group of five kids that get stuck in detention together and only four of them walk out alive. So one of them dies in detention and it's all the trail of what happened to that kid, how did they die, what's going on, all of that sort of stuff. and. Yeah, that hook alone had me. I'm a sucker for a good hook on the cover of a book or whatever. Do you see what I mean? Five students walk into detention, only four leave alive. Like, if you're gonna put that on a blurb, I'm gonna probably read that book. I also had one of my friends recommend this to me, and she did a good job because I really loved it, and I can't wait to read more by this author. She just has a really, really easy reading writing style and while the characters did feel a little bit stereotypical at times I still really enjoyed them and I enjoyed watching them grow and open up and I love stories with a plot that unfolds like bit by bit but it never feels slow and I really really loved it so I think this one probably got four and a half stars. I really need to start like writing down my ratings after I've read the book but whoops. So yeah if you're looking for a contemporary thriller pick this one up because it was a lot of fun and it was interesting to see how it all unraveled. The sixth book that I read was released by Patrick Ness and this was my reread. In this one we follow Adam Thorne who is a teenager as he goes about his day. So this book is told over the course of a single day and when I first heard that I put off reading this book because I'm like is it going to be interesting what the hell can happen in just one day that makes a book worth telling but let me tell you stuff happens. So good. So basically Adam is gay and he hasn't outrightly told his parents but his parents sort of assume that he may be but they're holding out the hope that he isn't. He has grown up in a heavily religious household and his dad is actually a pastor of one of the local churches. He's, he's like the head of a church and it just goes through Adam's day and each speed bump that he hits along the way and how that's going to create ripple effects for the rest of his life slash the next few weeks, months, whatever. And I really, really love this. This is the one that I said when I first read it. I didn't understand the second strand narrative that was happening. So we follow Adam, but we also follow like a queen and a fawn as they go on a journey too through the same town. And when you read it, it flicks between Adam and then you just get the random parts that the queen and the fawn are in. And when I first read read it I was like why are those parts in here I don't think it's really needed but on the reread it's needed and I really really enjoyed it and it helps to pace the first narrative as well so amazing amazing five stars from me. This book also made me cry multiple occasions and some of the sentences and thoughts in this book stayed with me for days after I'd finished reading it, which is when you know that you've read a good book. Also Patrick Ness, one of my favourite authors of all time and do you think I'm going to promote him in nearly every single one of my videos? You betcha. Lastly, I didn't realise this until someone pointed it out to me, but there are actually two faces on this cover. You have this face and then you have this face. Did my finger follow that? If not, you get what I mean. I just thought it was a river path thing, just a squiggly river path thing that the character is walking along. Yep. And the seventh and final book that I read for the month of June was Iron Gold by Pierce Brown and let me tell you what the fuck. <laughs> this was hectic and amazing. Just put that put that on the cover. Hectic and amazing. There were multiple plot lines going through this and they were all 
woven through a multiple point of view narrative. So we've got four different points of view, basically four different plot lines that you know end up colliding with each other. And the ending of this, I was like, are my babies okay? So I've been putting off reading this book for a while because I have heard that it takes a bit of a different tone than Red Rising. Oh, by the way, this is the fourth book in the Red Rising saga. So you need to read, you need to read these three books first. This one, Red Rising this one, Golden Sun, and this one, Morning Star. This is what the first book looks like. You need to read those books first before you get to Iron Gold because this is actually set 10 years after the events of the Red Rising trilogy. But yeah, I had heard that this one took on a bit of a different tone and I didn't know how I'd go with that, but I ended up really, really enjoying it. And I'm so glad I picked it up. And I'm glad I picked it up when I did because Dark Age, which is the book that follows this one, is going to be released soon. So I won't have to wait very long to find out what the fuck happened. So that's great. Right. This one probably got like, I think, I think I gave this one four and a half stars. I don't know. Pierce Brown, like, I know you shouldn't say this because then are you still being an objective reader and blah, blah, blah. But Pierce Brown is one of those authors that would probably get an automatic five stars from me when I finish reading his book because I'm always just left like, what just happened? That was amazing. But a bit of a trigger warning too for these books because this was bloody. And there were some parts when I was like, that person's jaw just got blown off with a gun and that's a bit disgusting or that person's eyes just got pushed in like in game of thrones and i was just picturing that that part in game of thrones and crying all over again so yeah these are the seven books that i read in the month of june like i said a bit of a mixed reading month for me which is fine like that's totally fine i think that means i'm either reading ones off my TBR which have been there for a while and I've been hesitant to bout or I'm branching out or it's just the luck of the draw. That's them. That's what I ate in June. So yeah, that will be it for this video. I would love to know what your favourite book you read in June was down in the comments and yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you like my different looking shelves from the last couple of videos because these are actually my two shelves on the other wall. Usually I'm filming with those shelves in front of me as my background but I thought I'd switch it up so you have more books to look at in the background while I'm talking so if your eyes start glazing over a little bit from my monotone nasally voice you have something else to look at. I'm just here to help you. Thanks for stopping by and I will see you next time. Bye!